In the last video, I showed you how to graph ordered pairs. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to graph something else on our coordinate plane. This time, vertical and horizontal lines. Let's start with an equation that is relatively simple. We'll start with an equation x equals 3. Now, that's a pretty easy equation to work with. But when we graph it on a number line, I'm sorry, on a coordinate plane, oftentimes students are not sure which way to go and what direction to go with their line. So here's a technique I've used over the years. I set up, as you'll see in class, I'll set up a simple xy table. In my xy table, I've already learned that x equals 3. So for each of the values that I'm going to choose, I'll use 3 for my x value. Now the y values, it really doesn't matter what numbers I choose. I might choose a negative 2 if I feel like a negative, maybe a 0, maybe a positive 4. It doesn't really matter what the numbers are on this side, because when I ultimately go to graph them, 3, negative 2 will be 3 over and 2 down. 3, 0 is, as we saw in the previous video, right here. And 3, 4 is 3 over and 4 up. When I graph those three points, notice how they do form a vertical orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and, without a ruler here, for sake of time, draw myself a nice straight line. And that line right there would be the x equals 3 line. If I did a different equation, if I did a y equals 3, all of a sudden I have a new kind of challenge ahead of me. I'm going to face it the same way. Set up my x and y table of values. This time, in place of the y, I'm going to put the 3. And I'll put it 3 times so that I have enough points to work with. And again, on my x values now, there's nothing really to compute. It doesn't really matter what numbers I put in. I'll go ahead and put in a, again, I'll stick with a negative maybe 1 this time, and maybe a 0 0.5 for a decimal and maybe a 5. Now when I graph these points, I'm going to go left 1 and 3 up. 1 left, 3 up would be my first point. A half to the right, and then 3 up. And 5 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3 up. Again, notice that you're going to find yourself all three points lining up correctly, and that would be a y equals 3 line. By the way, the reason why I choose three points every time is because without the third point, there's no guarantee that the three points will actually form a straight line. If you had a point here and a point here and a third one, let's say, on top, you wouldn't necessarily know which direction was the correct one, but at least you'd know there was a mistake. If three of your points line up, it's likely that you have the correct answer. Let's look at two more briefly. What if I had an x equals negative 2? This time with a negative 2, it doesn't really change my approach. I'm going to say x and y table. I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'll slide it up briefly. I'm going to go ahead and put a negative 2 in place of x, because I've already been told that's what it equals. And you guessed it, I'm going to go ahead and put in some numbers. This time I'm going to go nice and easy, negative 1, 0, and 1. Now I have 2 to the left and 1 down for my first value. Second value is 2 to the left and right on the line. And finally, 2 to the left and 1 up. 2 to the left and 1 up. Again, nice straight line that's vertical. And by the, po by the way, at this point, some of you might recognize there's a pattern. When you see x equals, it's going to be always vertical, and that's correct. When you see a y equals, for example, for our last example, maybe y equals 5, a shortcut might mean you could memorize that y equals are horizontal. You could count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places where y does equal 5, Put a couple points to the left, a couple points to the right, and draw yourself a nice straight line. That will indicate your x equals 5. So whether you remember a rule, a shortcut, or you use the table of values, graphing x equals and y equals lines can be fairly easy.